Let's talk notation briefly. Um, with anything in math, it's important to be able to communicate ideas. So we're going to use a couple of different types of notation in this class. Um, I, I probably won't use these two names. Um, one notation we're going to use is called Lagrange notation. I won't call it that. I'll just, uh, I'll just use it. Um, so you don't have to know that it's Lagrange notation or Leibniz notation. Um, I will point out, though, just a, an interesting historical fact. The Leibniz notation survives from, um, from Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz, who actually was one of the co-inventors of calculus. Um, and when I say co-inventors, he and, you, you know who else invented it? Newton. Newton. So he and Newton actually independently invented calculus within a few years of each other. Uh, it's an interesting story for another time, but um, I, I think it's interesting that his notation survived to today, and Newton's did not really. Uh, some of Newton's notation survived in, in some specific applications, but uh, hardly anybody uses his today. Um, and again, that's, that's a story for another time. Maybe we'll talk about it you know, on story day or something. Um, Lagrange notation deals very closely with our function notation. So we've, been, we've seen this function notation probably, you probably started doing this freshman year algebra, right? Or, or maybe sophomore year in algebra 5-6. Um, but you've seen this function notation. Basically, this represents a function where we have an input x, and then the output of the function would be um, some y value, y coordinate. Um, and so what this is telling me here uh, for the specific one is that x is the input and then f uh, is going to be the output. Well, when we take a derivative, we're going to use that same notation, except we're going to put a prime there. So we read this f prime of x, or you could read this the derivative of x. And like we said before, this itself can be a function. So the derivative of x, or I'm sorry, the derivative of f, um, or f prime of x, is a function that tells us what the slope of f is at any x value. So the input here is x, the output is going to be the slope of f at that x value. That is one notation. It has some benefits, it has some drawbacks, um, and we're going to kind of not necessarily mixed notation, but we're going to use two different notations. The other one is Leibniz notation, which uses something called differentials. And Leibniz notation is usually used when we represent a function with y. So instead of saying like f of x equals x squared, we might say y equals x squared. This is also going to have some uh, very, um, very significant um, features to it, uh, some things that are very helpful with it. Um, but also some drawbacks, too. Um, and the notation we're going to use here is this. This represents an operator, kind of like addition or subtraction or multiplication or exponentiation. Um, so this is the derivative. So then the derivative of the function, or the derivative of y, would be written like that. Or we can kind of combine that together and write this. Uh, you'll hear it read a few different ways. Um, a lot of people just read it d dx, so d dx of y, uh, or d by dx. So a lot of people you um, for this fraction, which actually it's not technically a fraction. It's not d divided by dx. Um, not really. It's it's kind of confusing. This gets into uh, limits a little bit, um, but it's not technically a fraction. But a lot of what we do, we'll be able to treat it as a fraction. Um, so we might read this d dx of y or d by dx of y, um, and then this usually we'll just read dy dx or dy by dx. The by definitely doesn't need to be in in between there, um, and it doesn't have to be like y as a function of x, but it could be um, say position. Uh, x as a function of time. So let's say that the position of a particle is like whatever the time squared is. Then we would write the derivative of that um, dx dt. Alright, so uh, the independent variable would be the in the denominator and the dependent variable would be in the numerator. Alright, so those two notations 
Um, if, if I was going to give them a name in class, I would probably call this prime notation. I would call this differential notation. Um, this is one other way that you might see it. If we're going to, this is kind of mixing notations a little bit, but if we were going to um, take the derivative of a function f of x, we could write it like this, d by dx of f of x. So d here is a differential. So this is a differential, uh, the differential of y, this is a differential of x. And essentially what this means is a very small change in y and a very small change in x. Um, this right here, and this is why it's not technically a fraction, the, the d by itself doesn't mean anything, but this is a very small change in f of x um, and a very small change in x. So it's basically saying a, a small change in y over a small change in x, which comes from the slope formula, because the slope formula is the change in y over the change in x, uh, which is delta y over delta x, right? So when, when those changes get really small, when we start taking a limit as that difference gets smaller and smaller, then the, the deltas turn into differentials. Uh, at least that's the way I like to think about it. Um, we can also, like I said, this is kind of mixing notations here, because usually with function notation we'll use the prime. Um, if we have a function y, or, or a, something written y equals, we can use the prime notation with that also and just say y prime. And that's the derivative of y.